Today we're going to give you an introduction to the truck. This is a class one, class A tractor, highway tractor. On the back goes a semi-trailer for those of you going to truck driving school and getting your CDL license, starting your career as a truck driver. So introduction to the switches, gauges, can be a little intimidating when you first get inside the truck. You look kind of look like a cockpit of an airplane, not quite as much. We're going to sort that out and simplify that for you. Many of the gauges and switches are the same as in your car. Some are unique to highway driving in a tractor. So let's get started and start here on the door. Uh, you have power windows on both sides of the truck, not like in the old days where you had an air switch for the passenger side and you had a crank handle for the driver's side. It's all power now. Mirrors are adjustable as well. They're electric. You can adjust both sides of the mirrors and that's handy when you're backing up trailers into docks and those types of things. As well, you have a switch here for heated mirrors in the winter time to keep them clean from ice and snow and those types of things. And then finally, there's a switch here for each side. So you pick left mirror, or right mirror. On this side, gauges are simple, same as in your car, oil pressure, water temperature in the radiator, and then volts, how many volts the electrical charging system is going. And most of these should be 13, 14 uh, when it's running normal. Now, most of these gauges are going to have a red line. And if it's in the red line, something's wrong with the vehicle and you need to take it to a technician and get it fixed. Power locks on the vehicle as well, same as your car. Down here on the left side of the steering wheel, you have your interior lights. You turn those off and on, and then you can also turn on the engine fan for the radiator. So if you're pulling hard in the mountains and the engine starts heating up as diesel engines will, when you're pulling hard, pulling super bees or those types of things, you can turn on the engine fan as well. Another little trick, if you're going downhill and the Jake brakes ah, kind of holding, not quite holding, uh, you can turn on the engine fan and that'll pull out another eh, five or six horsepower out of the engine and start and just slow you down a little bit. Now, when you do turn on the engine fan, let me tell you, it sound like, sounds like you're spooling up jet engines because it, it's quite noisy uh, when the engine fan comes on in these big diesel engines. The other uh, gauges here on the vehicle, obviously your tachometer tells you how fast the engine is spinning and then your road speed, how fast you're going up and down the road. We'll do the gauges here in the middle. These are your air brake gauges, which is essentially your primary air tank, how much air is in the primary tank, how much is in the low or the secondary system, and we'll tell you how much air pressure is in there, and then your brake application gauge, which may or may not be a very good gauge. <laughs> it's certainly not something that you should be looking at while you're going up and down the road, but Great for training students uh, when you're teaching about air brakes and how much pressure is going to the service brakes, essentially the brake pedal, uh, when you're pushing down on it. And uh, while well, you're coming to a stop in a big truck, you're not going to be looking at it. You're just going to be pushing down on the brake pedal. But it's there as well. Okay, fuel gauge, how much fuel you have in the tanks, same as your car. And then you have some other gauges here, which are not so important, and that's probably why they're off over to the far right here. Okay, front drive axle and your rear drive axle gives you the temperature of the oil in the axles. And again, these have red lines on them. If it's in the red line, then there's something wrong with the vehicle and it needs to be fixed. Now, if you're pulling mountains in the summertime and it's super hot and you're super heavy loaded, you know, it's 100 degrees in the shade, then maybe this might go into the red line. But otherwise, if there isn't an apparent reason, super hot, pulling super heavy, on the highway and those types of things, then you need to get in and get it checked. Transmission temperature, the oil in the transmission, what the temperature is. The boost is how much air the turbocharger is ram forcing into the engine. I'll put a card up here in the corner for you. Have a look at that for turbochargers. And I'll give you a further explanation of that awesome device that's on all new diesel engines. And then right over here in the far corner, we have the engine oil temperature, what the temperature of the oil is inside the engine. Down at the bottom here, we have the air filter. Essentially, it's a gauge that tells you when the air filter needs to be replaced on the vehicle. And it's essentially, it has a red line as well. It's telling you how much vacuum it takes to pull air through the air filter in the engine. Once it gets worn out, it's been in there for a while, and it reaches its date, then this needle will go up and tell you that the air filter needs to be replaced on the engine. And then the last one is your DEF fuel diesel exhaust fluid and it just tells you how much fluid is in the tank and you'll need to keep that up for the pollution controls on the diesel engine. Now, starting down here with the switches, 
Over on the left side of the steering wheel here, we have the cargo lights for the back when you're hooking up trailers and those types of things, the on off ignition switch, and then as well over here, you have your dash lights. You can turn your dash lights up and down. I'll put a card up in the corner for you on the night driving video. And one of the things I suggest, especially if you're running highways at night, is to turn down your dash lights as much as you can stand them to reduce fatigue and having your, your eyes drawn down to the dashboard because these things can be just like crazy lit up at night. So you want to try and turn your dash lights down as much as you can at night when you're driving to reduce fatigue and reduce distraction. Over here on the switches, starting here, we first one is the regen system. And again, this is the carbon that builds up inside the diesel motor. And when you're running up and down the highway and the engine's running hot, it will do it automatically. Now, if you're running, doing a lot of city running and I've heard stories where you've had to pull over and, you know, let the truck sit here and idle crazily at a high RPM for half an hour and to regen and kick the carbon and pollution out of the diesel engine. Have a look at the owner's manual, talk to the techs that service the vehicle and they'll be able to tell you more about that. But most of the time, if you're running up and down the highway for any length of time, it's going to take care of itself. This is an automatic truck. So you have a hill assist here. So you're not going to be pulled backwards while you're sitting waiting at the light. Oh, you know, when you're trying to get your foot from the brake pedal back to the, the throttle and it's called a throttle and a diesel engine. It's not called a gas pedal because they obviously don't put gas in a diesel engine. Trust me, <laughs> it doesn't make the truck go any faster. So that's hill assist. You basically hold that with your finger and then move your foot from the brake to the throttle, throttle up and get yourself going. Power takeoff, PTO. Uh, that's for accessories on the back of the vehicle here. This has a walking floor. So this runs the hydraulic pump for the hydraulic walking floor in the trailers. That's the purposes of the PTO. Traction control, excellent device, helps you out, keeps you stable on the roads and those types of things. You can push it, it's a dead man switch, so you have to hold it to get it off. Uh, if you got wheel spin and those types of things, you might need, you know, you're in a bit of mud, uh, you might need to push the traction control and get, get that off. But for the most part, it's gonna work independently and it's part of the ABS system, the uh, anti-lock braking system. It detects wheel spin and will direct power to different wheels to, to keep you going and keep you stable when you're going down the road and cornering and those types of things. The next uh, switch here is the lock for the fifth wheel. You can slide the fifth wheel forward and back, moving the front of the trailer more up onto the back of the truck to put more weight on the steer tires, or you can move the fifth wheel back to take weight off the steer tires on the tractor so that you're in compliance with your weights. Next switch here is the four-way flashers. Great for backing up when you're reversing, backing into a dock or those types of things. Activate your four-way flashers. The next two switches here are the engine retarder, the Jake brake, and the one is the on-off switch, and the next one sets the level. So you can set it on low, medium, or high. And some trucks, depending on the model and the brand, will have one, two, three, it's all the same mediums, uh, low and high. And the next two switches here are your cruise control. If you're driving truck, you don't want to be holding down that pedal for any length of time as well running on cruise control because big electronic diesel engines are designed to run on cruise control going up and down the highway. You're going to get better fuel economy working it on cruise control. And I'll put a video up here in the corner for you on cruise control so you can learn how to do that. The next one is your suspension dump for the back of the tractor. Uh, when you're hooking up to trailers, you want to dump the suspension so you can get in underneath the trailer and then reinflate the suspension and lift the trailer up. Let the technology do the work. Don't be doing the work by cranking the trailer up and then putting it back down. Let the suspension do that. So you dump it under the trailer and just before you get into the kingpin, lift it back up and then back into the kingpin. Don't make the mistake that a lot of veteran drivers do when they're hooking up to trailers. They just back, pull up back into the trailer. <laughs> Every now and again, it'll get you. You'll dump the kingpin over the front of the fifth wheel. And let me tell you, it's a lot of a lot of work to get that out of there. I've done it myself personally. Got lazy, got tired, and uh, didn't check the height of the trailer, that it was at the right height, and uh, dumped the kingpin over the front of the fifth wheel. And it's a lot of work to get that out of there. Last switches are your diff lock and your interaxle lock. So... On this truck, you have an inner axle lock and you have two diff locks. So you can lock the front axle. So both tires are turning at the same time. And then you can lock the back one. So they're turning at the same time. And then you can lock the two in between. It's like super posi traction 
on the back of the truck. If you have all of this engaged, both diff locks and the interaxle lock, sometimes called lockers, you'll hear old timers call them lockers. If you have all that locked, you're, it's gonna compromise your steering because the back end just wants to go straight and you've got everything locked up. Now you wanna be doing this at slow speed. You don't wanna be doing it like super fast speeds. So if you're in mud, climbing hills in the mountains, those types of things, you wanna be using your lockers and whatnot. I've also heard that it helps with auxiliary braking going downhill. You can put one of your diffs on and it will just help with traction coming down hills and those types of things. The driver that was saying that to me hauls tankers uh, in and around barns because he picks up milk. So just puts on one of the diffs to get down and help with auxiliary braking. So here on the left side of the steering wheel, you have windshield wipers, same as in your car, left signal, right signal, high low beams for the headlights. And then on the end here, you have a flasher. Essentially what you can do is if you're going down the highway and you pass another truck and they flash you to say that you're passed and that you can move back in because you know it's a big long vehicle and it's difficult to determine if you're past the other vehicle or not, you can flash these clearance lights and it'll flash the clearance lights to say thanks to the other driver. So that's the purpose of that switch there on the end. Here on the right is the trailer handbrake. This is to activate the service brakes on the trailer independent of the tractor and it says right on it, not for parking. And as well, you know, in most day and age, you put your foot on the brake pedal and it's gonna activate all the brakes equally. So you're not gonna use this for too much other than to check to make sure that the service brakes on the trailer are in fact working. So on the steering wheel, same as your car, you have a city horn, your little <laughs> meat horn, you know, when you push it and you're driving a big truck, you're kind of like, oh, that's a little bit demoralizing. But of course you got your air horn up here, your big air horn here, you want to scare the tire to somebody and be aggressive because they really upset you. Or, you know, kids are on the side of the road going like this, you can pull the air horn and, you know, absolutely make their day. Down on the bottom here, of course, new truck, all of the bells and whistles. It has a dial here for all of the information on that's available to you for the driver, uh, all the systems on the vehicle, tire pressure, air brake systems, all those types of things, fuel and whatnot. So that's there and then your heater controls, and then of course you have your trailer air supply and your parking brake for the tractor are here as well. And, and then of course your selector for the automatic transmission. And then down here you have a couple of outlets for nine volt. <laughs> we don't have cigarette lighters anymore. I know some of the old drivers will say, oh, the old five and fours. Yeah, 50 years ago, 50 years ago, we had cigarette lighters uh, as well, but they're not that anywhere. They're for auxiliaries. If you have a cooler in your truck or something like that, you can plug that in and uh, get auxiliary power to that. Down here on the floor, last piece here, we have a little pedal underneath the bottom of the steering wheel. This is unique to Kenworth is, is that this will help you with the tilt on your steering wheel so you can move that and adjust that so that's comfortable for you. So I think that's it in the truck. Uh, there's used to be some controls on some of the older Kenworths used to be some controls up here and you get light switches and those types of things and whatnot. Uh, you do have independent, you can turn on your interior lights here. If you're working on a log book or something like that, you can turn this on and then click it off. And as I said, the other switch will turn all of them on inside the truck. So it'll be like super bright for you at night uh, when you're working and whatnot. But uh, if you have any questions, you want further explanation, leave a comment down below here and I'll get back to you and help you out with your new career as a truck driver. Uh, try not to be overwhelmed by this. Like I said, the gauges on the left are the most important because they put them in the driver's line of sight. The ones on the right, not so much. If the gauge is in the red zone, then yes, it needs to be paid attention to. It needs to be taken into a technician, but some of them are important, some of them aren't important, and you'll work with your driving instructors at the, drive, at the truck driving school, and they'll help you with all of this to know what they are, how they work, and how to drive the truck safely. Click over here for the playlist on truck driving school. That'll give you all the videos to be successful in earning your CDL license, starting your new career as a truck driver. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now. If you want the complete list, detailed list of what you need to say, what you need to inspect for the purposes of passing your pre-trip inspection, click up in the corner here, head over to the Smart Drive Test website.